we 100% recommend making sure that you think through all of these things, okay? Even if you're not on a farm, what if you have a loved one that is on oxygen? Hi you guys, welcome back to Kirshner Farmstead. If you are new to our channel, my name is Kirsty, and today we are just going to sit down and have a little bit of a chat about backup energy. Okay, um, as preppers are the, or as you know, people that like to be prepared, um, we are always thinking about everything that can happen, right? I am actually in the middle of filming a bread video for you guys and the power went out. Out of the middle of nowhere, somebody across the freeway from us uh, mentioned on, you know, on Facebook, I don't know who it was, uh, mentioned that they heard an explosion, which would have been a transformer blowing because people like to say explosion for, you know, shock value, I would imagine. Um, but we have transformers blow quite often here, okay? So it's just, it's just the, the way of living in California, right? Well, because that, now I don't know for a fact that that's what it was. I am just going 100% off of what was said on Facebook. So could be legit, could not, could have just, you know, could be anything. But um, we are waiting to hear from pg &E why our power is out and it's out, right? Okay, so at any given time, there are a dozen things on this farm that have to have power. Okay. So it's not, it's not like we're living in an apartment where it doesn't matter if the power goes out and which even in that case, it still does matter because you have food in your fridge and you have to have a way to keep it cold. Right. Okay. So we have like, and I'm so thankful for Hunter because that kid is thinking on his feet all the time. Okay. He came out and said, mom, what about the incubators? And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about the incubators. Justin was gone. He was doing a dump run this morning. And um, I was like, yeah, we have incubators going. Now, keep in mind, it is not the end of the world if your incubator shuts off or something happens for up to 45 minutes. It's totally fine because you guys have to think hens do get off of their nests on occasion, right? Okay, so that being said, um, I have no idea how long the power is going to be out. They give us an estimate of when it will be back on, but we have literally no idea really because it, they could say noon and it could literally be midnight tonight if we're lucky or tomorrow morning or whatever. Last year, if you go back and you look at our preparedness video that we did, um, January of 2022, we had a 14 day power outage. 14 days, guys. The power actually came back on on my birthday. It was the best birthday present ever. <laughs> but so the, really, obviously, this is nowhere near that. But my point is that we don't know, right? So we don't have the option of just sitting and going, okay, well, we'll just wait for the power to come back on and it'll all be hunky-dory. No, it's not going to be hunky-dory. We'll have dead chicks in the incubator, without a doubt. And not only do I have our own chicks in our in, in one of our incubators, but I am incubating for a friend who's trying to get eggs hatched and we're splitting the hatch. So it's not just my eggs that are at risk here. It's her eggs also. Okay. I also have heat mats on my baby peppers and I have, um, and I have lights on animals outside and not heat lights. I, I not heat lamps, but I have lights on my chickens and stuff like that. And it's just, it is what it is. We have to have a backup power source. So we 100% recommend making sure that you think through all of these things. Okay. Even if you're not on a farm, what if you have a loved one that is on oxygen or that needs a CPAP machine or that, you know, there's, there's a, I, and I know I'm not even, you know, breaching the top of this, but you get the point. If you have a loved one, maybe elderly, maybe not, that needs medical equipment that runs off of electricity, what are you going to do if your power shuts off or if their power shuts off? 
you have to have a backup plan. You have to have a generator. Like there is whether just solar generator, whatever it is that you made. And you guys need to look into the solar because a lot of the solar solutions are not going to run when the power is out, when your grid is down. You have to have an option that is, if your grid is down, you have to have an option to have power, period. And let's say that it's not life-threatening and that it's not agricultural, like ours, most of ours is agricultural. Um, let's just say that you live in a house in a suburb and you have freezers filled with meat. What are you going to do if that power goes out? Because do you know how much PG&E gave us? They gave us a hundred dollars for a 14 day power outage. Now, tell, tell me, please, who can replace a freezer full of meat right now for a hundred bucks? I don't think anywhere in this country could you replace an entire freezer full. I, you couldn't replace an apartment size freezer full of meat right now for a hundred dollars, could you? No, it's ridiculous and it's BS and it just, it's, it's very frustrating, okay? So you have to be proactive and you have to make sure that you are going to, to save your food, to save your food, to save your loved ones, you know, and look at what happened, like, like look at what happened in Texas, okay? What if your heat source is electric? What are you going to do if you, you have no electricity and it, a freeze comes through and your power is out? What are you going to do? You have to have a backup for power, whether it's, you know, across the board. So we have a generator for electricity and heat if we were to need it. We have a fireplace. That's that's our main source of heat anyways. We don't we don't use anything but our fireplace. But in some if some random thing happened and there was something wrong with our fireplace, we could turn that generator on and we could put a heater in here and keep us warm. Okay? You have to make sure that you have gas to put in your generator because if the power goes down, without doubt, there is going to be a line a mile long at your local gas station to get the gas, okay? So make sure that you have gas before the fact. Now, remember, gas does not store forever, okay? You want to rotate your gas. So if you have, um, if you have five gallon cans of gas, then take the five gallon can of gas and after two months or so, as long as it has been stored properly, after two months, put it in your car, to use it and then go fill up it again. So you have a rotating store. Just don't set it and forget it because gas does not last forever, okay? All right, you guys, what else can we talk about with this? This is a fun one, okay? I I am so glad Hunter reminded me of the incubators. I'm sure I would have remembered at some point because they're literally in my kitchen, but still, I, I just, I can't. <laughs> It is very frustrating to um, to have unreliable power when you live in a first world country, don't you think? <laughs> so, anyways, um, yeah, so these are just all things that you guys need to think about, okay? You need to make sure that you have backups for everything. And um, there, no matter who you are, whether as long as you have food in a refrigerator, then you are at risk of losing something from a power outage, okay? Um, it's really easy to say, oh, I'll just bundle up under blankets and I'll be warm for the night and it'll be fine. Well, maybe, maybe not, you know? You have to make sure that you have a heat source if you rely on electric heat. You have to make sure that you have a power source if you have freezers or medical equipment or um, like I have agricultural equipment, incubators and grow lights and everything else. Um, it is very important, you guys, and I think that this is something that needs to be talked about, especially, especially in places where the power is not always reliable. We probably have, on average, a dozen power outages a year. Now, whether that, that doesn't mean that we're out of power for days and days at a time, we could have, like, this one will probably just be a few hours, um, knock on wood, <laughs> this one will probably just be a few hours all the way up to two weeks, you know? So um, we, it, small or large, you guys just have to make sure you never know what the weather is going to be like when the power goes out. In California alone, we could wake up and have it be 17 degrees and have the power out. Or we could be in the middle of the summer and have a fire and, or a windy day because we have public safety power shutoffs now in California. And that what they do there 
is they will shut our power down because we have, uh, because they are worried that something's gonna blow down on the lines and start a fire. Okay, so everything, and it could be 90 degrees or 100 degrees or 110 degrees in August here. So we could go, we literally go from the teens in winter to 100 plus in summer. So you have to be prepared across the board. What are you going to do? Do you live in the Mojave Desert where it's going to be 120 degrees and there's a possibility of your power going out? Make sure that you have something to keep you comfortable if you can't um, if you can't sustain in 120 degree heat without a, an air conditioner, okay? On the flip side, if you live where it gets to negative 50, make sure that you have something to keep you warm in case of the power going out, okay? I would imagine that people where it gets that cold do, but just in case, you gotta make sure, okay? Like, this is literally safety. This comes down to safety, this comes down to life, whether it's chick life, or human life, it can come down to life because you have to make sure that you can keep yourself and whatever else you need to keep alive, alive, okay? All right, so on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you have something to add, please add it in the comments below. I know I did not go over everything. It's just impossible in, you know, a 15 minute time frame. Um, but if you have any additional words of wisdom, please feel free to add them in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, I hope that you will like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And as always, I hope you guys have a blessed day. Bye.